but overall, it offers enough fast-paced fun to make this a worthy addition to the MCU. <laughs> Now to um, the premiere. To the premiere. Review. Oh my gosh, she's going to use 18 inches on you. Oh my god, I hope so. Oh my gosh. I fucking hope so. Well, oh, Thor. Love. Love and blunder. And thunder. What a freaking mess. Oh, oh my, my goodness. gosh, this is not good. This is not going good, fellas. It's not going good. It's not great. So we watched Love, Thor, Love and Thunder. The critics have it at 68%. That's probably the second lowest reviewed uh, Marvel movie ever. I'm going to guess next to The Eternals. What's Thor Dark World? Look that up real quick. I think, oh, okay. Look it up real quick. And it's 79% on the audience score. Let's just check Thor Dark. Dark something. The Dark World. Here we go. 66%. It's about the same. It's pretty darn close. I mean, it's only a 3% difference on the critic side. It was 75% on the audience score. 10,000 plus verified reviews. Critic consensus, in some ways, Thor Love and Thunder feels like Ragnarok Redux. But overall, it offers enough fast-paced fun to make this a worthy addition to the MCU. <laughs> audience says, even though Thor Love and Thunder consistent silliness makes it hard to invest in the more serious sides of the story, there's plenty here to enjoy. Look, if you like this movie, I do not blame you. It's fine if you shut your brain off and you're like, it's great, whatever, man. I enjoyed it. <laughs> Stars a lot of great actors. Chris Hemsworth, Natalie Portman, man. She's not that good. Christian Bale, man. Tessa Thompson, man. Taika Waititi. Woo, Titi. Russell Crowe. Russell Crowe's in it for no reason. This was, um, let's, <laughs> well, this is, here, I'll read some bad reviews. The film passes through the nervous system without delivering any substance or even leaving a residue. You may, this is another review from Jordan Hoffman. You may feel as if Taika Waititi's hammer is hitting you over the head. With stupidity. Yeah, you could say that. I, I want an, uh, another bad review see here is there not enough bad reviews oh there's plenty i just i want to read a good one this one seems kind of long uh disney underestimates the audience like never before grand fans consuming and liking their movies just because their reason to exist made them confident that all marvel marvel movies need cringy jokes cgi and forced crossovers and that's what all this movie is about but marvel fans will think it's a masterpiece and disney will fill their pockets i don't know about that I think it's gonna underperform. I don't. It'll be hard to get to a billion. I think for this movie. Uh, Doctor Strange didn't make it to a billion. How will this make it to a billion? This won't even break seven hundred thousand. I bet you it comes in at like six twenty. Uh, yeah, I'm not sure. So, uh, there were some interesting breakdowns by uh, a couple other YouTubers that I watched about this, and they were saying less people, based on inflation and ticket sales saw this than saw Ragnarok because I don't think the previews did or the, the trailers did this movie any justice and I think the best person to explain this is Screen Rant's own uh, Ryan George for the pitch meeting I, if you don't subscribe to that guy's channel you are crazy he is one of the funniest people on YouTube he has amazing pitch movies for every movie and we're going to break down a couple points that he had because he does it better than we can he had some points that we didn't even think about. But Thor doesn't logically make a ton of sense. Nope. You have... And we're going to do some spoilers, folks. So be prepared for some spoilers. And look, if you liked it, I do not blame you for enjoying it. We're just pointing out the funnies. If you hated all gods because the gods were selfish and you didn't feel like the gods cared about anything, but your plan to steal something from the gods was to take away their take away children that they care about that doesn't make a lot of sense maybe gore was a sexual predator <laughs> and he, he did come off a little he a little he, cr like he a didn't little, have a like, whole lot of clothes no he had a long Very sword loose, loose he had a clothes. long sword so i mean that could be a euphemism just saying 
Doc's saying it made 400 million already. I would double check that because I don't think it did. I mean, that. 400 million is it's going to drop 250 off. 250 million dollars. It's budget. going to drop off precipitously this week. You weekend. have to remember too something like uh, Batman versus Superman, which had a budget of 250, made like 750 million and literally made DC change its entire strategy on how they were making movies. That's because DC's dumb as shit. Marvel is pretty close behind it when they made Miss Marvel, which had less than half the viewers of the worst viewed show they ever had. Yeah, Miss Marvel was pretty bad. Yeah, and do you think anyone's going to see the Marvel's movie? That's definitely going to bomb. The Eternals bomb. Yeah, Eternals was bad. Yeah, absolutely. So Love and Thunder, let's t- let's talk about when you introduce something where you could teleport with the Bifrost, but then you could also teleport with Zeus's thunder stick or his thunderbolt, right? Yeah. Uh, I think it's a it's a pretty bad idea. Like, can't you just teleport all the children away at the end? You probably could. Yeah. So, but you need to have lightning children to fight. Yes, because Thor decides to arm a bunch of children to defeat Gore the God Butcher. So he recruits a bunch of child soldiers to uh, take on Gore. He does. That seems like child it. Surge- child soldiers are the best soldiers. Do you have to avoid the rip storm? Of the, the rip ch- nido. The rip nido of the child soldiers. They become the white devil. <laughs> I had to change my voice so I could please the white devil. Yeah, yeah. that's uh, that's an inside joke. It is. Seth sent it. Very inside. Like Gore wanted to be inside those children. <laughs> <laughs> it is a little creepy that he puts them in a cage. He is. And then he entertains them with childlike devices. This was basically just add a kid movie. Yes. What is that? Cousin Oliver. They decided to cousin, cousin Oliver the MCU and, and give Thor a child for no reason. It doesn't, does not work for me. And then, you know, I think tonally it doesn't make any sense at all because you have endless jokes like screaming goats, which worked maybe twice. I thought it was like it, that was so fucking dumb. I laughed. The least offensive of all of the yeah. the things. Sensibly says I should be the leader of the child soldier army. I agree. I He's love ready leading and prepared. I love leading kids. Yes, you you should make sure that you also check out the sensibly cynical podcast. You should. Every time it's on, he's handsome. Is, did he release his 200th episode? Because we have a fucking short that we got to release on YouTube. Yeah, you have to uh, let us know so that we can celebrate with yeah, you. Yeah, the thing you we sent you, we're going to release too. Since you didn't have us on as a guest for the 200th episode, you piece of shit. Yes. Love you. Love you. Just kidding. Hey, um, Doc, we will, I will send you the pitch meeting where they t- explain to you how it makes no sense whatsoever. Like, it wasn't... It's well, not no. a bad movie. It's, it's not a good one not either. It's good, and it's not that, like... Like, if, if you think about it at all... If you... Ragnarok was really good the first watch and then you watch it again you're like oh these are all empty jokes that don't land the second time not to mention they like forget things that like Valkyrie is a slave trader that's true and she's okay with that that's a perfectly good profession yeah trading slaves you can make money she's literally a a slave hunter you can make money she returns slaves back to the Grand Wizard the biggest difference is this movie Compared to Thor Ragnarok, Thor Ragnarok, you didn't really realize that it's not rewatchable until you watch it the second time. This movie is like, as you're watching it, I'm realizing like, oh, this isn't. Oh, this is not good. It's not rewatchable. You know, like, they bring in female Thor, and they're like, oh yeah, Jane Foster has stage four cancer. Screaming goats! Ah! I don't. Jane, she, Natalie Portman did not age well. Like she just looks off to me. She looks weird. She, like my girlfriend thought she looked hot. I'm she like, she looked hot as female Thor, but they also CGI'd the crap out of her. Gave her yeah, giant. She arms. looked like super. If they tell me that her arms were real one more time, I'm going to punch someone in Hollywood in the face. They were CGI. Her face was CGI. Her hair was not real. Nothing about female Thor was real. We are not stupid. She doesn't look like a man. And then Taika Waititi, who insulted his own movie several times, was like, "Yeah, we had her stand on a platform every time because we wanted." Yeah, because Natalie like Portman is like five foot tall. Chris, she's a little tiny person. Yeah, Chris Hemsworth is six foot three. Yeah, he's a big dude. And they were like on the same height level. Oh, the worst joke of the movie, by the way, 
was the uh, the beats joke. Beats. She's like, is that a grenade? No, it's a it's a speaker. Oh yeah, that and was they started the dancing. Di- no, everyone in, in first of all, I was telling better jokes in the theater than the actual movie was because I'm that guy who shouts at the screen and tells really bad jokes. I was shouting jokes, and when that scene came up and that joke popped up, where they were talking about the 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 they were dancing to the, I was like, everyone in the theater was just like, you could feel it. They were like, that's not funny. Doc is saying her arms were real. They, Doc, I have a bridge to sell you. Her arms were not real. What part of CGI do you not understand? Her arms were real. Yeah, her jacked giant arms. Have you ever seen Natalie Portman? She's like, she's a vegetarian, bro. Unless she took all the Mexican supplements in all of Mexico, she ain't getting arms that are jacked. I'm telling you, she's a vegan. She's lifting she them mushrooms. Get, yeah, she's lifting uh. mushrooms all day long. She ain't getting that big. And in fact, uh, Thor's wife, who is the star of that ridiculous movie that we watched. Oh, um, the, the missile movie. What the hell is that shit, called? What's her name? We did a video. Interceptor. About it, we, yeah, Interceptor. <laughs> she said that he was too jacked. She was like, I didn't like how big he was. He was big. Oh my. Thor was a big boy. Oh, when all those women fainted, I believe it. <laughs> oh, what were you gonna say about Russell Crowe? Russell Crowe. This is how bad of a director Taika Waititi is. When you're a director of a movie, you're supposed to give guidance to the director or or to the actors to give them the best performance they possibly can. Taika Waititi couldn't decide what accent that Russell Crowe should be in. So he was like, just film them both. Just film every accent you could possibly do, Russell Crowe. It doesn't matter. So he picked the worst one possible. Yep. When he, he absolutely does the worst possible accent he does this ridiculous greek accent which makes no sense whatsoever apparently the other accent was british a british accent which which they said he sounded too much like sir lawrence olivier from clash of the titans you could have like what in the world are you talking about people oh my gosh we didn't even talk about the wish yet Oh, God. We're still talking? This is like the freaking wishes from freaking the... Ga- what was that Gal Gadot movie? Wonder Woman 2, which was the, one of the worst superhero movies ever made. If you had a wish... If there was a wish genie at the center of the universe, why didn't Thanos go to the wish genie and just wish for everybody <laughs> to be half dead instead of sacrificing all of his children... The Black Order, everybody. Just sacrifice everybody. Let's fight the Avengers. No, why not just beat up he Thor? He wanted to challenge himself. Why not just beat up Thor? Challenge himself. And take the... You already killed Heimdall. Just take the Bifrost. Challenge you himself. You had it in your own hand. Why can't you just... Okay, so Sh- then you also could have... Then the Avengers, Tony Stark didn't have to spend 10 years inventing time travel. They could have just went. They had Thor. They could have just used the Bifrost and went to the Wish Genie. What are you talking about? What craziness? Am I not right about this? I, I mean, you're kind of right. I mean, thank you to... But uh, the, the movie's not good enough to really care enough. No, they don't care at all. They don't care at all. Yeah. So, and instead of wishing for all the gods to be dead, because, you know, he doesn't like any gods. He wishes for his daughter to be alive, but he dies. So now Thor has a kid. He's no mom. With, He's just a single dad. With powers. With powers. Purple powers. And she's called love. Ah, uh, your girlfriend contributed to... Uh, yes, Natalie Portman is a vegan. And there's... Who who else was a vegan and could barely play once they became a vegan? Who's the football player who did it? What? There was a football player we talked about. He's on. The, he was on the Panthers and got, got cut. And uh, went on the Patriots and got cut. His quarterback. Cam Newton? Cam Newton became a vegan and couldn't perform in the NFL because he became a vegan. I'm telling you this. So Doc is telling me that Natalie Portman, the vegan, got jacked arms. Like, she got these type of guns. No, that didn't happen. Well, for eating them shrooms. Your girlfriend says, yes, she's a vegan, and that 
Chris Hensworth wouldn't eat meat wouldn't the days he the kissed her. Wouldn't take the meat. Wouldn't eat it. She needed the meat, but he wouldn't give it to her. Would not give it to her yeah, at all. Not, not even a Respectful little bit. Respectful of her wishes, but still, she needed it. She needed that meat. Yeah. So, I'm not going to say this is not a recommend. It's not that it's a bad movie. It's just not good. Marvel has clearly lost a step. Endgame was truly the endgame of Marvel. Everything after it has been not good enough. Yeah, None this it. is... It's all right. Like, it's watchable, but yeah, it's not... it's fine. If you just want to shut your brain off, right? It's fine. It's not rewatchable. Yeah, if you rewatch it, you're going to be pissed. You're going to be like, why did I watch this I'll again? still buy it and give it away, because why not? I mean, if, if somebody else wants to be female Thor... Oh, and my last point will be all of the cool stuff that was that was not filmed that could have been cool that you would have liked to watch. Would you have liked to watch Gore the God Butcher butcher some gods? Yes. Would you have liked to watch Natalie Portman turn into Thor for the very first time? Naked, yes. Where she goes from feeble, AIDS-riddled, I mean cancer-riddled female character to mighty... Thor? Would you like to have seen that? Yes. Would you have liked to see the guy made of rocks, Korg, turn into a full-bodied rock man? No, fuck that guy. What about, would you have liked to watch the Guardians of the Galaxy? In the whole movie? In the whole movie. <laughs> yep. Yeah, hell I yeah. Would. I would. Please redo this movie and put the Guardians in it. I enjoyed that part more than I enjoyed anything else. That was the best part of the whole Put movie. Put him in the whole time. What? Put him in the whole time. Yeah, that was the best part of the movie. Keep yeah. him in the whole time. 